Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's give God a hand. Praise. Let's stand to your feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand to your feet, everybody.
Please stand at this time. If you're able to stand, could you please stand at this time? Probably doing our call to worship. Let's put your hands together and give God a hallelujah praise in this building. Has the Lord been good to anybody? Has the Lord blessed anybody? Has the Lord made a way for anybody? Has the Lord opened a door for anybody? I dare you to make the devil mad and open up your mouth. Put your hands together. And shout hallelujah. Shout thank you, Jesus. Shout he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. To be praised. Give the Lord a hand and clap of praise. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. 
I hope that him come and go to that land. We'll have prayer by Reverend Clarence Atterbury, correspond sweet, sweet spirit. Then we have a selection by our uh, golden voices. Then I will return. Come and go to that land. Sir, have mercy. 
And Father, we come not because we've been so good or righteous, but because you've been good, gracious, and merciful. And we want to say thank you, Father. Father, it was you who gave us control of our limbs, Father. We were able to see our families moving around early this morning, and we want to say thank you, Father. Father, it was you who protected us during the night, Father. You kept us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger, from sin, evil, and temptation. And we just want to say thank you, Father. And Father, we realize, Father, that you gave us the ultimate gift, Father, in your son Jesus, Father. We realize that he left his lofty position in heaven to come down and inhabit among us here on earth, Father. And, and, and we just want to say thank you, Father. Father, we just pray that you would continue to bless this church, Father. And this morning, Father, we ask that you would chase our hellhounds away, Father. That your word would go forth, Father. That you would dip the one that's going to break the bread of life this morning in the well of wisdom. That she would come out preaching, thus says the Lord. Rightly dividing your word and spirit and in truth. And Father, we come this morning thanking you that you've kept our loved ones, Father, safe. And Father, we've seen you walking among the hospital wards, Father. Going into the various rooms, Father. And we just thank you, Father, to visit our sick and shut in. Father, we just ask you that you would please, sir, come and comfort those Comfort those who've lost the love, the, 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 a loved one, Father. And Father, we just ask that as we leave this place today that you go out before us, Father, that we might tell this dying world about your son, Jesus, and what he did for us, Father. It's in the mighty and precious name of Jesus, we pray this in all other prayers. Amen, amen, and amen.
The church don't want to hear that kind of singing no more. Amen. But we can't forget the landmark that brought us. Amen. We praise God and we thank God so much for them. Amen. At this time, we will have the welcome and recognition of our visitors by Deaconess. Minnie Pearl Thomas <laughs> from Mississippi and the wife of Deacon Cecil Thomas. Amen. To our shield, our shelter, and our shepherd, recognizing our pastor, Reverend Ricky Ray Ezell Sr., the proclamator of this prescription of a powerful word today. Reverend Flossie Montgomery, Reverend Phillips, and Reverend Atterbury. To our officers, our members, and our friends, good morning. This is a time when we come to recognize those who are visiting us via the internet, and we encourage you to come into the house and get some of this powerful word. And for those of you who are here initially for the first time today, will you please rise and stand until you have been recognized. Praise the Lord. We welcome you to this awesome, awesome worship experience today. On behalf of our pastor and this entire church family, we welcome you today. We have a mandate from the master, and that is to lift up a name that is above every name. We know that our services are going to be a blessing to you, and we know you're going to come again. So may God's richest blessings be with you today. Thank you for coming, and you may be seated. And now we would like for each of you to take a note of our upcoming events for this week. Today, our second quarterly seed offering will be lifted, and our baptism today will be at 5.45 p.m., and we encourage you to return. The Central Baptist Summer Enrichment Program will begin tomorrow, June 1st, and enrollment applications are still being accepted, so one of the best programs in the Richland area, so please bring your child. Academic recognition forms for grades kindergarten through 11 are also due now, and they are asked that you bring them in tomorrow, June 1st. We'd like for those forms to be put in the youth ministry mailbox, and that is in room 101. My favorite part of the year is Vacation Bible School, and that will be held on June 8th through the 12th, and we encourage all of you to come it will be from 6 to 8 p.m. The theme this year is the Jesus Connection, What a Friend. All ages are invited, including adults. Refreshments will be served. Our very own deaconess, Julie Livingston, is our director this year. Pastor Ezell will preach God's word at Cornerstone Baptist Church, 100 Wayne Street, and this is on Wednesday, June 10th, 2015, at the hour of 7.30 p.m. Reverend Allison Baker is the pastor, the male chorus of Central, and the United Voices will accompany the pastor. Our annual church picnic is this Saturday right after Vacation Bible School, and that is June 13th at Saluda Shoals Park in Irmo, from noon that day until 5 p.m. Please join us for food fellowship, and it's a lot of fun. Report cards for the fourth marking period are now due. Please place copies, parents, and students in the academic recognition mailbox located in room 104, and we are asking for these by Sunday, June 14th. The Health and Wellness Ministry scholarship applications are available to all 2015 high school graduates who have plans to pursue a major in the field of medicine. Please contact any member of the Education Ministry or the church office to receive an application to apply for this great scholarship. 
We pray that you would continue to visit our website at www.centralbaptistcolumbia.org. God's word today is coming from Scripture, John 3, verses 16 through 17. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Deacon S. Thomas. Let us govern ourselves accordingly to our announcement. On the fourth Sunday in June, we'll be celebrating our educational day here at the Central Baptist Church. You often hear the statement that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. But if you're not doing anything to help contribute to the development of the mind, then you're contributing to the waste of the mind. Amen. We believe in investing in our young people. On that weekend, on that Friday night, we're having a banquet for all our young people. We got many high school. We have 12 high school graduates this year. Somebody ought to say amen. <laughs> and we have a number of college graduates that we'll be honored to recognize at that time as well. And what we're going to do on that Friday night in our banquet, we're going to recognize all of our youth in our church. If you made it from first grade to second grade, that's where they're being recognized. Amen. Each parent, each guardian will be able to turn in a form filled out with three achievements of your child that we can read out that night. We want to give them special attention. Uh, we don't have time to do as much of that in church as I would like to, but we're going to do it on that night. We're going to read the achievements, and we're going to recognize them. Then each graduate will speak for about three minutes and share some things with us about them. It's going to be a great time. Amen. On that night, it's going to be Sunday attire night. Amen. I remember something we had three, four years ago. I saw T-shirts and jeans. It's not that, as a young folk, it's not that kind of party. Amen, somebody. It's something when a child dresses up. It's something when your child is dressed up and feeling good about themselves in an environment along those lines. Amen. But you know what I always realized? My, my children left the house. I knew how they were looking when they left. Now, you know, they get a little smarter down the years. They have a change somewhere else when they get there. But I knew how they looked when they left. Amen, somebody. All right, but we want them to feel special and recognize them on that night. Now, it's going to be an ad booklet. Please, ma'am, please, sir, take out an ad and recognize your son and your daughter. If you don't have a child in school like we don't, we're taking out an ad. on all, We're taking out a full-page ad, me and Cookie, recognizing all the children of Central. See, every child ought to be your child whether you have a biological child or not, amen. Let's honor and recognize him. Then on that Saturday, we're having a fun day for them at the church. We're going to have basketball. We're going to have games set up. We're going to have cookout, just fun and recreation, amen. They're going to have good, clean music. Amen. But, you know, they, 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 can't, they can't have fun with amazing grace. Amen. You got to give them something they like as long as it's clean. Amen. We want them to have a good time. Then we're coming back that Sunday and having our academic uh, recognition day program, our educational day program where our graduates are marching. And we're looking forward to the 11 o'clock hour, man, because Courtney Thomas, Deacon, Deacon S. Summers' daughter, is going to speak for us. And I know she's a fresh, firm and graduate, and we can't wait to hear what the Lord has in store for her. Amen. Amen. On that Friday night for our banquet speaker, I'm finalizing it now once again. They won't have a young lady come and speak to us who, when she graduated from high school, she received a $250,000 four-year scholarship. Y'all listen at me? Got very sick while she was in college, had some detours in her life, got herself back up as not as a young attorney. Our children need to see success stories like that that go before them and was an outstanding basketball player as well. We want to bring people before young people that highlight their achievements. Amen. So we're looking forward to a great time of fellowship with them. Brother Charles Livingston, will you stand up and remain standing one second, please, sir? 
I want to officially say to you, so let's make this your last time standing up as a visitor. This is your home. Amen. Let me tell you, Sister Carrie is rejoicing in heaven right now. I want you to know she's rejoicing. She prayed for you. She prayed at this altar for you. She prayed on River Drive for you. She prayed in San Sala for you. This is an answered prayer. I want you to know that. Amen. You're not a visitor. I know your ministry work has taken you many places, but Central has been and will always be your home. So don't ever stand up as a visitor. You're a part of this church family. God bless you, my brother. Good. Now let us prepare to give back to the Lord a portion of that which the Lord has blessed us with. The word said, where your man's treasure is, that's where his heart will be also. What a man loves, he doesn't mind giving to. Can I say that again? What a man loves, he doesn't mind giving to. If he loves to play golf, he'll play rounds of golf all day long. If he loves to fish, he'll fish even when it's raining. What a man loves, that's what his heart is. You show me a man who say he loves his woman that's with him, and she's looking all raggedy because he ain't spending no money on her. Amen, somebody. If you love her, when you step out, you want her to look right like you're looking right. Amen, somebody. Don't complain that much. Your hair don't look like it's done. Cut, reach in your pocket. I bet you she'll go get it done. What you love, you don't mind putting your money there. And so when we come now to give back to God his tithes and our offering, the tithe doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the Lord. He said if we take the first 10% of our income, give him a tithe, his tithe and our offering, he'll open up the windows of heaven and he will pour out a blessing that we won't have room enough to receive. We have an opportunity to honor the Lord in our worship through our giving. Let us stand. We have the person's hand next to you. Re repeat after me. I know that, I know that you're, going to give you're going to give the Lord, the Lord his very best, very best because you love the Lord. Love the, Lord. the Lord's been good to you. The, the tithe belongs to him. If you use the tithe for anything else, you will be robbing God. Why would you rob a God? That's been good to you. Why would you rob a God that's giving you his air to breathe? Why would you rob a God whose blood is running warm in your vein? I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm not going to rob my God. He's been too good to me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn, middle eyes turn and face each other. Outside our face and walls, you're in the hand of our ushers. Our united voices, we're in the music. I got joy in my soul, God is in control. I got singing on my trail, when I'm singing all this well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back to this. I got 
joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. This means sing at 8 and 11. Amen. I told them we only actually do it four times a year. I only do it 50 some weeks a year. Amen, somebody. And we thank them and they, they are getting their win because they're full right about now. Amen. We had breakfast ordered in for them this morning. I said, if you stay, I'll feed you. 
We'll take care again. I believe there is a difference between breakfast and continental stuff. I'm from Georgia. We're going to eat. Let's eat. I don't have time for no muffins and wheat grain. If we're going to eat, let's go ahead and eat. Amen. So, so when they walked in the Family Life Center, they had their choices of place with bacon, eggs, grits, sauce, the whole work. Yeah, yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. So they got through that first song. They'll be, they're getting ready now for the next one. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen. Sweet spirit in this place and knows the spirit of the Lord. Sister Maggie, anytime I see you smiling that bright, I see your family all around you. I know you're happy, aren't you? Carol Converse, good having y'all with us. Praise God. Anthony, good seeing y'all, man. Praise God much for you. Every fifth Sunday, four times a year, we lift a voluntary seed offering. And it's to go into the community. The seed is never for this house, but the seed is to bless other houses. Our tithes and offering, the Lord requires that of you. The seed is when you go beyond that. It's easy to sow a seed when you got extra money. If I got extra 20, extra 50, it's easy to sow it. But can you sow when it's tight? Huh? Can you sow when you're not caught up on your bills? Can you sow when you reach in your pocket and pull out there's nothing to pull? Whatever you have today, I want you to trust God enough to sow and watch and see what God will do because of your faith. Not because of your amount. Because of your faith. Are you willing to be obedient and sow on good soul and see what the Lord is getting ready to do. As our choir leads us in our selection, I'm going to bless off in the van. This is our seed. If you're making out a check, just write out the Central Baptist Church, put seed offering. And then if there's something specific you're asking God for, put it in there with it. Just take a note and put it in there. Because when you sow your seed, you got to expect a harvest. Some of us expect a harvest and never sown anything. How can you expect to reap the harvest if you don't trust enough to put your seed in the ground? Amen, somebody. Let's bless this as a man. God, our Father, we thank you for the opportunity to bring our seed right now. For we know your grace and your favor is working together for our good. We have a seed in the ground. Ah, well, there's no more stressing, but we got a seed in the ground now. And I just believe, God, if we sow with the right spirit that you're going to bless our efforts. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. You don't have to get up. The ushers will walk by you and uh, pass the basket for all of you to do your sowing, amen. And remember, God knows your heart. If you don't have it, it's so God knows. And if you do have it and don't, so God knows your heart, amen. amen. Oh, yeah. 
yes he is and he said he would not comfort me the Lord said he would be right there my God is everywhere God said I believe it God said I believe it Lord I
take him at his word. Amen. Amen. It's preaching time. Let me say it one more time. It's preaching time. We thank God for her. Amen. Reverend Clance Atterbury, we thank God for him. Amen. And for our preacher for the hour, Reverend Flossie Montgomery. Yes. Amen. 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 Flossie can preach. And Flossie will preach. Amen, Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. Now, I'll never forget in our preacher's class that I teach after the preachers preach their sermons or videotaping, we play them in the class. And we go through points on the sermon that they can do this or that. Amen, somebody. And the last sermon Flossie had, Flossie came out in high gear. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Flossie preached with such power and such conviction. Amen. Amen. I thank God for Flossie's faithfulness. Thank God for her faithfulness. I watch Flossie come out of the environment, walking in the plants. I watch Flossie go through physical challenges from accidents and medical challenges. But then I watch Flossie get on the road every day and drive to Morris College to get a bachelor's degree. I watch Flossie go through a rigorous curriculum at Lutheran Theological Seminary to get a master's degree. Because she realized when God calls you, he equips you. But in order for God to be able to get the best out of Flossie, then Flossie had a lot of Lord to pull into her. I knew it wasn't easy, those long trips up and down those roads. But God did not call her to be successful. He called her to be faithful. And if you are faithful, the success will come. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. So after a selection by our golden voices, as they give us a selection, preparing to him a preparation before the preach word, we have our scripture read into our hearing by Sister Wanda Atterbury. Then we would hear from the golden voices. And then the next preaching voice that you would hear is that of the Reverend Flossie Montgomery. Amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let us stand. To condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I have read John 3 16, uh, I'm sorry, John 3 verses 16 and 17. May God have a blessing to the hearers, the doers of his word. Amen. 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 Thank
keep on way. You told me to put my trust in me. That's why I'm asking you, Lord. Help me to hold out, oh, oh Lord. Help, help me to hold out, oh, Lord. Somebody will hear your word today, Father God, and give them a heart to receive. Oh, Father God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight, oh Lord. Oh, Father God, just use me for the glorifying of your kingdom. I decrease in myself, Lord God, and I ask you to increase in me. I thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. 
I praise God, our text, which has already been read, which I will read it again. John the third chapter, verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17, for God sent him not his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him might be saved. Our subject today is, nobody can or will love you like God. Hallelujah. We're going to concentrate on that 16th verse, praise God. Praise God on the 17th verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let's talk a little bit about love before we get into the preach word. Because just as some people are confused about God and who he is, they are also confused about what love is. Glory be to God. You see, everybody talks about love. Everyone experiences love in some form or another. Everyone is driven by the need to give it and receive it. It is false ideas of love that's tearing our world apart, tearing our homes apart, our hearts, even our nations. Pity is also confused as a love. You're having pity on someone and you think you love them. Another false idea. The counterfeit idea of love are all around us. Kindness is often confused as a love. Praise God. Discipline causes pain, which seems unkind. So we tell our children, we're doing it because we love you. If you have been broken hearts romantically, we face the danger of thinking that all love, including God's love, is unstable. We bring hurting ones to Jesus. And we tell them that God is their father. But the only image of a father is linked to abuse. We say to them, welcome to the family. But families where they were rejected and alienated. We teach them about authority. But authority to them is stained by pain. Anytime a child doesn't know his father loves him, it's destined to be dysfunctional. That's why Paul said, I pray that you might know the love of Christ. These mistaken ideas about God can be devastating. To begin to understand love, we must first begin to understand God. This is a love that blows the mind because it's beyond anything we can know. It cannot be compared to anything we grew up with. It cannot be compared to anything we experienced in the past. It can't be compared to who we are married to or given birth to. And only the love of God gives us hope in the face of disappointment and despair. Right. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. God desires to give us a gift, his love. But a gift must be received. If someone give me a gift and I take it and I never open it, I don't say thank you. I have not received that gift. You see, my point is that giving of a gift is only one half of a transaction. It doesn't become real and it doesn't take effect until the gift is accepted, open, identified, and appreciated. In the same way, it is not enough that God simply offers his love he expects us to receive it. The love of God keep replenishing our hearts and our minds. The love God has for us is infinitely pure, accepting, patient, kind, generous, and more than any other kind of love you can receive. It's so low you can't get under it. It's so high you can't go over it. It's so wide you can't go around it. It's so deep you can't get to the bottom of it. It's so, hallelujah, you cannot fathom it with your mind. You can never exhaust God's love. Now let's go to our text. John 3.16 is preached and studied and cited more than any other biblical passage. Yet it never becomes yesterday's news. 
Since the message of assembly, since the message, praise God, of John 3, 16 is for the entire world, it would have been delivered to a large assembly, but instead it was given to one single person privately, a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He was one of the leading members of the Jewish council. Jesus had aroused the anger and opposition of these Jewish leaders because of his claims to be the son of God and what he saw as his disregard for some of their laws. But Nicodemus was not sure, just like some of us. He had seen the miracles of Jesus, and he could not forget him as easily as his peers. We must remember that Nicodemus, like all the Jews, and saw himself as one of the God's chosen people in a highly exclusive sense. They belong to God by virtue of their birth into a favorite race. Their coming Messiah would destroy all Gentiles, especially the hated Romans who occupied Israel. Could Jesus be the man? Nicodemus wanted to find out. So to avoid the sense of the Sanhedrin, he sneaked out at night to see Jesus alone. But the conversation didn't go the way he expected it. Jesus began talking to him about being born again. And the spirit of God is like wind blowing wherever it chooses. Jesus was telling him that the spirit will soon come, move outside the Jewish nation into the hearts of the Gentiles all over the earth. Then, just in case Nicodemus still didn't understand, Jesus put the message in words that no one, I said no one, could fail to understand. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Here Jesus laid the foundation for you and for me. Our relationship with God is not a foundation of judgment or condemnation. It is a foundation of pure love. In John 3, 16, Jesus told Nicodemus and the rest of us that God would do anything to save us, even if he had to die. He loves us that much. My first thing I want to let you know that God is love. The love of God is not something we can know with our mind. It is something that passes knowledge. It is beyond our ability to comprehend with our minds. The love of God is something we have to accept by faith in our hearts. Praise God. Accept as a fact of God's nature and open our hearts to experience just as we accept it and experience our salvation. As surely as we know we are saved by the blood of Jesus, we know we are divinely loved and eternally cherished because of the blood of Jesus. I must let you know today that God is love and that he deeply and eternally insists on loving every person on this earth. It doesn't matter who you are or what you have done. You can't fall beyond God's love. God loves and includes people you don't like. That person that pulled out in front of you this morning on your way to church. Your boss who was rude to you on last week and waiting for you to return to work on tomorrow. Oh, glory to God, that young lady at the register that knew you were in line yesterday and you were next in line, looked over you and said, next, and took the person after you. You see, God still loved them too. He loves all of us. God's love shall begin and end our every day. It, shall, it, shall, it should define our every goal and every decision we make. He doesn't just love us when we are doing well. God is personally and passionately committed to our good, even when we fail. God loves us. The Bible tells us that God is love. The Apostle John writes these words, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. He reiterates this truth a few sentences later in verse 16. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. 
So what does the apostle mean when he says that God is love? He is telling us something about the nature and the essence of God. Not just that God loves, but God is love. Praise God. You see, everything God does is rooted in and motivated by love. He made the world because he is love. He formed us because he is love. And he rules the universe because he is love. John is reminding us that when we think of God and the world he created, we should never forget about his love because God is love. God is love. He just didn't love the world. He so loved the world. And he so loved you and me. Secondly, I want you to know that God's love never changes. In a world that moves and changes as fast as ours, there's one thing that remains the same, the character of God. In Malachi, the third chapter, around the sixth verse, God lets Malachi know he is Lord and he does not change. In Psalm 33 and 11, the psalmist wrote that the counsel of the Lord stands forever. And James 1 and 17 describes God as the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. God's love never changes. God's love is constant in his faithfulness. It doesn't diminish nor disappears, regardless of our circumstances. We can look to Jesus for the model of unchanging, ever-enduring love. Toward the end of Jesus' three-year earthly ministry, we must, he must have felt disappointment over the lack of spiritual maturity in his disciples. Thomas doubted him, Peter denied him, and Judas betrayed him. On Jesus' last evening of freedom, Jesus humbled himself as a servant and washed the feet of his Jesus. I'm telling you today, even though somebody lied on you, I want you to know you got to keep on loving them. No matter what they've done to you, all you got to do is just keep on loving them. Don't turn your back on them because God is love. Be like Jesus after he knew he was being betrayed, after he knew he was being denied. He stood there and washed his disciples' feet. You don't have to wash their feet, but you got to keep on loving them no matter what, praise God. You see, in that moment, you know, Jesus knew uh, that Judas was moving through the streets, uh, betraying him to the authority. Then Jesus said, and expressed his deep love. He said, love ye one another. And he is speaking to us today. Love ye one another. No matter how many times they betray you. No matter what they do to hurt you. Love them anyhow. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus knew his execution was just hours away. But yet, glory be to God. He didn't concern himself about himself being executed. He was concerned about us, praise God. Hallelujah. Because his love never changed. He kept on loving his disciples all around him. And he said in his word, in John 17 and 20, he said, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Praise God. You see, his word reach across from time to this moment to you and to me in a world that was condemning him and was excruciating pain and cruel to face in him. His uttermost thoughts were of love for us, praise God, helping us to understand the love of God. Glory be to God. Let me give you a good side and a better side to God's unchanging love. You see, the good side is that God won't wake up in the morning and say, I had enough of you. All that we do, hallelujah, that he don't appreciate. We know that is not of God. He won't tell us, hallelujah, I don't love you anymore. But glory to God. And the battle side is, when we wake up in the morning, somebody feel like, hey, I don't want no more of this God. I'm here to tell you, he'll be right there and he will still love you. No matter what, God will still love you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You see, God's love for believers 
doesn't love, let you think like he doesn't love unbelievers. But he loved believers and unbelievers alike, praise God. Glory be to God. You see, in Jesus the Christ, we have become children of God. Paul tells us in Romans 5 and 8 that God demonstrated his own love to, uh, toward us while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. We can see that God still loves all the world, sinners and saints, praise God. Glory be to God. Let me tell you, this world is wicked. No matter how wicked the world may become, no matter how deep sin it may sink in, God's love will never change. Jesus compared it to the love of a shepherd for a stray sheep. The shepherd goes into the wilderness to seek and save the lost sheep, praise God. Now let me make this clear. God hates sin, but he never stopped loving the sinner. He never stops going into the tangled wilderness of their failures to rescue them. God's love is personal and intimate. You see, God does not love a population. He loves people. Glory be to God. He loves us with a mighty love that has no beginning. And his love has no ending. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He will never stop loving you and me. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see, God's love doesn't depend on how well we love him back. We can't earn it. We don't deserve it. And we sure enough can't maintain it. Glory be to God. Yes, his love is wrapped around us. God's love is unchanging. God is not a trouble spray. Like you spray on your clothes to get this spread out. To ward off our pain and troubles. It is an unchanging glue of love. Glory be to God. To keep us bonded when trouble comes. An unchanging love of glue that holds us, praise God, no matter what. So fall in love with Jesus. Get to know him. Have an intimate relationship with him. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Then we need to walk in the love of God. Say to ourselves, God loves me. He loves me. He will never withdraw his love from us. Even if we mess up, his love is unconditional and eternal. He doesn't change because we had a bad day. His love toward us goes on forever and forever. There is no ending to God's love for us. Glory be to God. And thirdly, God's love never quits. If we could chart the love of God, it would show us a straight line, praise God. On top of that graph, his love never dips and it doesn't plunge down. You heard the stocks plunging. But you will never hear of God's love plunging. Glory be to God. But it remained constant. We cannot keep God from loving us. There are two circumstances in which we are prone to doubt the love of God. When we are the agents of evil and when we are the victims of evil. This is the time we think that God doesn't love us. But let me tell you something. God has never promised to keep all evil away from us. In fact, he reminds us constantly that evil is all around us. The point is that God is always more powerful than the worst the devil can throw at us. Glory be to God. God has all power in his hand. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. It's, and I'm, I'm glad somebody asked this question. You say, well, since God hates evil, how can he love us? When we do evil. I'm glad you asked. Glory be to God. Let me tell you. Yes, God hates evil. But there are consequences to our evil acts. We reap what we sow. But those consequences do not include the loss of God's love for us. You see, God loves us because it's his nature to love. Nothing more and nothing less. Even when we have no faith. God still remains faithful. His love for us never quits. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. God did not stop loving Adam and Eve after they violated his one restriction in the Garden of Eden. He punished them, but he never quit loving them. God did not quit loving Noah even though he dishonored the grace God has shown in saving his family from the flood 
by laying naked and drunk before his son. God did not quit loving Abraham, even though he sought relief from fame in Egypt instead of trusting God to provide for him. God did not quit loving Moses, even though he committed murder and later violated God's command by losing his temper and striking the rock of his provision. You see, God punished Moses by denying him entrance into the promised land. But later he showed his love and mercy by allowing Moses to stand with Elijah in the presence of Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Glory be to God. God will not quit loving us. Since the Garden of Eden, we have chosen to break laws as fast as he could give them to us. But God's love continues, never giving up hope, never shedding doors, never reacting, but always reaching out to rescue and restore us. Glory be to God. Yes, love can be painful, and that's the very reason it can overcome the world. God shows us that miracles come to pass when the one who loves receives bad for good. Yet keep offering the good. Keep loving, not looking for anything in return. Glory be to God. Somebody will walk up to you right now. Hallelujah. You have the love of God inside you. Hallelujah. They walk up to you and say, I heard you say, you say I love you anyhow. Glory be to God. No matter what, always return that love back to them, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. If they don't give it to you, you give it to them. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If they walk by you and you say, good morning, and they look at you and say, I love you anyhow. Walk in God's love. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. No matter what, walk in this love. Glory be to God. You see, the doorway between heaven and earth is cracked open. And the light of God's love shines through. We can strike back when we are hit, or we can just go somewhere and hide. We are children of an eternal God. And we were made for something better. We were made to experience and dispense the miracle of selfish, patient, stubborn love. A love that does not quit. A love that does not demand that you love me back. A love that does not avoid pain, but is compassionate beyond measure. Glory be to God. That's what I love so much about God. Oh, he is unlike us. I don't have to worry about whether you love me, he loved me back or not, because he said he loved me. And he loves you, praise God. And that's the way we need to be. Glory be to God. That's how God's love is. No matter what we have done, no matter how far we have fallen, no matter what you heard Satan whisper in your ear, God love never quit. Praise God. Hallelujah. The love of God must be accepted by faith. How do we do that? In the same way we accept faith by our salvation. We choose to believe that God is true to his word and that his nature is love and that when we are in Christ, we are his beloved. Ephesians 1 and 6. Then we look at the cross, the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. is the ultimate expression of God's love. He was God's only begotten son. And to show us how much he loved us, God required that his son open his arms on the cross as an open invitation of embrace, saying, this is how much I love you. Glory be to God. And his word is true. Praise God. Try it for yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. Just try it for yourself. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. In receiving Christ as our Savior, we receive the full expression of God's love toward us. There is nothing we have to do. There is nothing we can do to earn God's love. God's love us through Jesus Christ. He loves us. He desires and chooses to love us. We experience his love only as we accept that Jesus Christ did what he did for us on the cross. And open our hearts in faith. We love him because he first loved us. He gave himself an offering and a sacrifice for us. Eventually, we will begin to experience and feel God's love for us. And it is the love of God that heals us. It bathes us. It washes us. It cleanses us. He restores us. He builds us up. 
and makes us whole. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You see, only the love of God can cleanse you, praise God. Hallelujah. You can wash with soap and water all you want, but until you fall in love with Jesus and have that, oh, hallelujah, intimate relationship with God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You got to love him more than you love your wife. Love him more than you love your husband. Love him more than mom and daddy. Love him more than your children. Glory be to God. Oh, you got to love him. Ah, don't just speak it from your mouth, hallelujah. You got to love him from the heart. You see, God said in his word, above all things, he said, ah, know your heart. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, there might be somebody here today. Glory be to God. I just want you to know, no matter what you've done, God has not turned his back on you. He still loves you. Oh, just cry out to him. Just call on the name of Jesus. Here, hear your cry. Just call him. His name is Jesus. 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 Just call him. Here, hear you. Ooh, when you cry. Oh, hallelujah. You see, he also said, I will never leave you. He said, I always be with you. Oh, let me tell you, you are not walking alone. Oh, God is right there by your side. Oh, I'm here to tell you, hallelujah. Glory to God. That God promised you. Oh, hallelujah. No matter what you're going through. Oh, glory to God. Sometime you're walking. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. You might be walking, and you're walking, and you say, oh, I went to that church. Oh, I say, say there are Christians over in that church, but I'm going through. I feel like I'm walking alone. Oh, but I'm here to tell you, you look behind you. You don't see nobody behind you. Oh, glory to God. Then you look to the right. You don't see nobody beside you. Then you look to the left. Nobody there. But I want you to know he is right there. He is holding you up. He is holding you up. Hallelujah. Just trying and trust him. Know that he's there for you. Just stand on his word, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Always remember, God is love. God's love for you will never change or it will never fail. You see, his love beareth all things. It believeth all things. Hopeth all things. And endureth all things. Glory be to God. He will never quit on you. So don't quit on God. He will bear you up in time when you're serving him with your whole heart. Even times when you're not. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He hopes with the assurance of eternity that you will be blessed beyond measure even when you're swallowed up by your circumstances. That you don't feel hope, he endures all things. Even doubts and rejection of him. God's love is kind, is patient, and is perfect. Glory be to God. And I ask the question again, or oh, I'll see. Do you know anybody Anybody, hallelujah, that will love you like God. Do you know anybody that can love you like God? There is nobody that can or will love you like God. So I say it again. Turn your hearts to Jesus. Today is the time to give him your all, praise God. There is nobody else you can turn to because nobody can love you like God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Lord, I praise you. Hallelujah. Let God love you today. There is no other kind of love like the love of God. Let God be the one that holds you. Glory be to God. Let God be the one for you in the midnight hour. Glory be to God. Let God be there for you when you're in the coat room. Hallelujah. Let God be the one there for you in the hospital room. Don't trust in the doctors. Trust in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will. He will continue to love you. No matter what you have done. Hallelujah. You could have been on drugs. But I'm here to tell you. He will cleanse you up. He will wash you. He will restore you. And make you whole. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You might have been walking the 
the streets that night. I'm here to tell you, God still loves you. No matter what you've done. No matter how far you've fallen. God will pick you up and bring you back to him. He loves you. Glory be to God. There is no love like the love of God. Hallelujah. Just walk with him. Just have a little talk with Jesus. And he'll make it all right. Amen. Praise God. Just hold on to him. Will you grab a hold to him? Use that glue. That love glue. And just hold on to him. And let him take you. And bind you to him. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for the heart that received it today, Father God. I thank you for using me for the glorifying of your kingdom. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, move in this house as you never moved before. Oh, Father God, we just thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And thank you. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. If you love the Lord, say amen one more time. Did you receive this word today from this woman of God who preached from the seat of her soul? If so, give God a hand clap of praise for the word that was preached unto our hearing on this day. We thank God for the message and we thank God for the messenger. Thank you, Reverend Montgomery, for allowing God to use you to preach Jesus unto our hearing. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whosoever, I like that part, we serve a whosoever God. Whosoever believeth in him. That's something about eternal life that's awaiting us when we believe in him. Powerful message about love. There may be someone today up under the sound of my voice want to step out from where you are today. Give the pastor your hand, but give God your heart. Today we're not talking about eros love, E-R-O-S, that's romantic love. You could fall in and fall out depending upon the physique and how the figure changes. We're not talking about filios, that's brotherly love. We're not talking about storgy, that's family love. But we are talking about agape, that's that unconditional love. You don't have to do anything for me in order for me to love you. I love you because we have the same daddy. And we are brothers and sisters on this journey. Maybe someone want to step out today from wherever you are. Maybe you're being challenged right now. And you need to be reminded of that unconditional love. That he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. So we thank God for Jesus. Let us stand today. You may come by letter, by your Christian experience, or candidate for baptism. We serve a whosoever will God, whosoever will let them come. The door of the church is open. It's a quiet lead says in our invitation to him. Blessed assurance. Blessed Will you come today? By letter? By your Christian experience? A candidate for baptism. Will you come? Yes, yes. Oh, we're born of his spirit. Oh, watch. Everybody, this is. Will you come? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, oh. Oh, this is. Yes, yes. Oh, we're just praising.
this is your day we will receive you today Yes, yes, yes. It's prayer time at the altar. We come to the altar for prayer. It's prayer time at the altar.